All right, so what we're going to discuss in this video is the use of dummy variables in regression problems. Now, typically, uh, we want to uh, include lots of variables in our regression problem as inputs. Uh, the output of a regression problem should be a number. Um, but sometimes we want inputs to be non to not be numbers. So maybe we want to include gender in a model. Uh, maybe we're, you know, for instance, predicting salary, and we want to see, you know, how does gender impact the salary in our in our model. But we can't put things like male and female into a model. So what we do is we replace them with what's called a dummy variable. Typically, these are binary dummy variables. They have only two outcomes, zero or one. Uh, and we we can we can do this for more than two categories at a time, but um, typically, this is the construction that we use. So, for example, if we were doing gender, typically this is um, historically been treated as only a binary variable, male and female. And so it has two levels. And so we pick one of them to be zero, and then we pick the other one to be one. And so essentially what this amounts to is that you will then have if, let's say, um, uh, let's say male is zero, that's the default when, and then the, the signal is the female. If it, you're a female, you get the one. And then the coefficient is then interpreted as the benefit or penalty that being female receives over being male. But what if you have more than, than two variables? What if you have three variables, three categories, three, three levels within your categorical variable? Well, one strategy you might think would be to replace them with three different numbers, like zero, one, and two. Now, this is a problem, generally speaking, because this imposes certain assumptions upon your categories. So um, zero, one, and two are ordered values. So uh, if your levels are not ordered, then this imposes an order on them that may not apply. Secondly, it also assumes that the variables are equally spaced in some way, that the contribution of the second category uh, relative to the first is the same as the contribution of the second category relative to the set of the third category relative to the second. That, again, may not be true. And so we're, we're, we're imposing this sort of an interpretation when we use numbers like this. Now, there are certainly circumstances when um, this kind of makes sense. Um, but most of the time, that's not a good place to start. And so we generally don't want to do this. Instead, what we do is we break our variable up into several dummy variables that are all binary. So if we have k levels, then we create k minus one binary dummy variables. So for instance, if we had three levels, we would create two binary dummy variables. And so the way this works is the following. Suppose we have three age categories, young, middle-aged, and older. Uh, we set up one dummy variable to have the value one when, for instance, the, the person in this group is middle-aged and zero otherwise. And then we set up a second dummy variable that will take on the value one when the original variable is older and then zero otherwise. Now, what this means is that when someone is middle-aged, the two variable values will be one and zero. And when someone is older, the two variable values will be zero and one. And when the person is younger, they will both be zero. And so we've represented all three categories with different combinations of these variables. Um, our three categories have been transformed into two variables, two dummy variables. And that way, when they're both zero, then the young will be the default. And then when the middle-aged variable is turned on, we'll be able to see the change from young to middle-aged. And when we see the older variable turned on, then we'll be able to see the change from young to older. And again, they, they may have an equal spacing with middle-aged and older, or they might not. They might be nonlinear and they might go in different directions. Middle-aged might go up and older might go down, or 
uh, middle age might go up and older might not go up again. It might come back down again relative to middle age. So those nonlinearities can be captured in this way, in a way that zero, one, and two simply can't um, handle. Now, and in this particular example, young, middle aged, and older are in some ways ordered, but that's not necessarily the case. What if this was uh, Cabernet, Pinot, and Chardonnay? Well, I don't know how to order those. What if they were, you know, east, west, and south? I mean, again, how do we order those sort of sequentially? So this is a procedure that can work for variables that could potentially feel ordered, but that also works for things that are definitely not ordered. Now, once we have our variables constructed, we just use them in the regression the same way we have with other variables. Um, we've seen actually a couple of our uh, previous analyses with multiple regression um, where uh, both in our backward selection video and in the, the sort of basic one where the variables were already made into dummy variables with zero one in a couple of different places. But what we're going to look at in this video is how to make those dummy variables. And then once you have the dummy variables, um, you get rid of the, well, you, you move to the side the other original variables, and then you build your regression uh, as normal, the multiple regression from these new variables that you've created. So now let's go to Excel and let's actually talk about how to create these uh, dummy variables. So in this example, we have essentially violent crime rate that we're trying to predict. And um, we have information, uh, these are individual states and their particular violent crime um, statistics from a given year. Um, now these are just labels, so it's like Betsy, Joe, and Bob. Um, they're not variables that we have to worry about because there's there's 50 of them, 51 of them technically, because DC is also in here, I think, yes, right there. Um, now, instead, what we have are regional variables and subdivisions, um, and those are the things, again, that we want to turn into dummy variables because, again, region is not ordered. I mean, um, these look like New England, and these look like the Midwest, maybe, and this is the Mid-Atlantic or the South or something. So these are not ordered in the sort of traditional sense. They're not ordinal variables. So what we want to do is we want to create a substitution for them. Now, we have four different categories, so we're going to need three different variables. So I'm going to let region one be the default. Just we have to pick one to be the something to be the default. And so I'm going to let one be the default. So I'm going to have region two. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. I don't want to open that. Um, region two, there we go. Honestly. <laughs> Sometimes Excel, they're trying to be helpful and then just like, ah! uh, region three and region four. So these are all gonna be like, yes, no. Is it in region two? Is it in region three? Is it in region four? And then region one will be if you answer no to all of these. And what we can do is we can construct a basically uh, inequality statement, an if statement. If this region is equal to one, then, um, or equal to two, give it a one. And if it's not, give it a zero. And then we copy that all the way down. Oops. This one. So we can see all the region twos have popping up as one. That's yes, region two. And then everything else is zero. And then we construct a similar one if the region variable is equal to two 
or three in this category, then make it a one or a zero otherwise. And again, we copy it down. Great, so region three is popping up as one. And then finally, similarly, if the region column is equal to four, make that a one or a zero otherwise. So region four is showing up as a four, as a one, and everybody else is showing up as a zero. So zero, zero, zero is region one, region two is one, zero, zero, region three is zero, one, zero, and region four is zero, zero, one. So that's our region variable. Now, after you've done this calculation, I strongly suggest pasting as values um, because when I eliminate this region column, I don't want these to like all revert to zero. Uh, and then we want to do subdivisions. Now, subdivisions, there are nine subdivisions. And so we're going to have subdivision two and subdivision three and subdivision four and so on. Um, and let's see how clever Excel is and see if it understands what I want it to do. Ah, sometimes Excel can be very smart. That saved me quite a lot of typing. And so again, I'm gonna construct an if statement, if subdivision equals two, make it a one or make it a zero. If subdivision is equal to three, make it a one or make it a zero. If subdivision is equal to four, make it a one or make it a zero. And then make it five. Make it a six. Make it a seven. For subdivision one, then these should all be zero. We have eight new variables. And then we copy them all the way down. And again, what we should see is that subdivision nine, subdivision eight, seven, six, all the way up. Fantastic. And then again, copy and paste as values. So they don't depend on the formulas anymore because um, what I wanna do in fact is I don't need the state because those are just labels. Uh, when I do my analysis, they're not going to contribute to the analysis at all. Instead, these are all going to be my new X variables. Instead of region and subdivision, these are going to be my potential inputs. And then violent crime statistics are going to be my Y that I'm trying to predict. And so from here, we can then perform our data analysis, tool pack um, analysis on our multiple regression and see what happens. And so I'm just gonna do that very quickly. Y range. This is our violent crime rate. And our X range. Now, from this point, of course, um, everything proceeds in the same way that we would have proceeded before. We will need to make selections in terms of 
uh, what does and doesn't get to stay. Uh, I'm going to leave off the residual plots because these are all discrete variables. Um, and there's a lot of them. And where do I put my output? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And again, you would analyze these uh, similarly to the way you would in other cases. Now, um, these p values, um, there's, their analyses are not um, in being very predictive here. Um, the coefficients are zero. They, they don't seem to have any input at all, or they're not used often enough, or they're only being copied uh, on other variables that are the same. So um, these, these don't seem to be contributing at all. This is an error, essentially. If we go back through our p-values, again, we start to see, we would have to take out these subdivisions in a process. Um, and then, um, in fact, if we, if we look carefully, Um, yeah, so we want to take out some of these um, to see if we can um, you know, get rid of these errors. And then we would start eliminating. So if, for instance, region two doesn't look like, um, the fact that this p-value is very high suggests that it's not very similar, not very dissimilar from, let's say, region one, that because it's not really contributing anything to the model. So it, procedurally, if, particularly if you're doing backward selection, start by trying to eliminate variables that are producing errors, um, and then proceed through your, um, your p-values, eliminate high p-values, and hopefully as you start eliminating variables, then um, some of these other p-values will start coming down. But at, we don't have a lot of observations and we, we created with these categorical variables, we created a lot of new variables. And so that in itself can sometimes create problems when we construct dummy variables. Um, if you don't have a lot of inputs, there may not be enough analysis basically to go around. Okay.